Hello, my name is Tonio Bonassisi and I'm a professor of engineering. I work with materials and for about 17 years I've been focused on developing uh, better solar cells. And during that process I've learned that the research and development endeavor uh, is a lengthy, time-intensive and money-intensive process. And the process can be, I wouldn't say frustrating, but it's challenging. So it can take one PhD student 10,000 experiments over five years to just discover one new material, right? So my name is Kedar. I'm currently the program manager for a program on hybrid thermoelectric materials. If you ask a typical scientist, what will life be like in 10 years time? The vision of self-driving cars and, uh, and, and more begin to dissolve away into a pretty conservative picture of the laboratory, just like it is today in 10 years time. But if you look at the tools that are emerging, uh, we're really at the cusp of something exciting. We, we live in the world surrounded by all the data, and then we analyze, our researchers analyze those data to see what is the best way to combine different components and suggest the best way with the reduced cost and more importantly, sustainable miner to use energy to power our life and industry as well. Hello, my name is Xiao Nan Wang. I'm currently an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering at National University of Singapore. So this is where uh, this sort of program started. So what this new program that we have just initiated is called Accelerated Materials Development for Manufacturing. The goal of the program is to reduce the time it takes to develop a new material from 20 years today down to two years in the near future. The way we're going to accomplish this is by utilizing three different emergent technologies, machine learning, automation, and high-performance computing so that we can discover materials better, diagnose materials better, and optimize materials better. How, how important the data is for the development of new materials, discovery of new materials, and optimization of the conditions. When we learn within a certain parameter space, we can then predict within that par parameter space something we've missed that might give us you know, something that we desire, you know, uh, which would be a very nice property. The next thing is extrapolate, and that's where the real fun is. Okay, which is discovering new things that are completely surprising. The existence of contradiction is an opportunity for invention. Finding a way to produce a solar cell at high efficiency and low cost is what humanity has been working on for the last 40 years and is now finally reaching the marketplace. So the proof of the pudding was in the eating, right? So we actually tried it and after Chinese New Year, within half a day, we made this new setup that is now able to reduce our development time for something like a week for one measurement down to an hour. Accelerating materials development. Materials is always a key thing that we want to improve and use that to benefit, to, to benefit humans. And in materials research, we don't always have large data sets, but we have complex ones. And it's precisely the complexity that challenges the machine learning algorithms to do more than they've already done. And the data, more importantly, in the new machine learning and AI stage, data is a new currency, as we discussed. In 20 years' time, what would be fantastic is some remote village in Thailand, they have a problem. And they can't capture the attention of the large economic powers to help solve it for them. They're now empowered with a tool set to do that. You can actually classify the problem statement and say, OK, I need a new material that needs to be made that is waterproof, that's cheap. Through the data, we are able to analyze how we can use this high throughput equipment to get the data, to train the data to get a very nice model, and use this model to find the best conditions to yield the best efficiency to produce this material. So you go to the local additive manufacturing center, either it's subsidized by the government or it's run by an NGO or it's run by a private company who's doing good. You go there and they build your roof with that particular property. Then it solves the problem for the whole village. Therefore, every country can afford this. Your manufacturers in the country will be able to afford this. You know, and how many, daily, day to day, how many problems do we solve, right? So many of them. So all of those small problems affect how you live as a society. Right, you're able to perform research closer to the speed of your imagination than the speed of your resources today. Right? And what that allows you to do is invent faster, innovate faster, and also to take bigger risks. And it's those big risks that sometimes lead to the biggest discoveries. So the reason we want to do this is because um, uh, it is actually time uh, to innovate faster. If we want to make a low cost but robust replacement for plastic bags and straws, for example, 
We can't wait until 2050 before we have this technology around, or else there will be more pieces of plastic floating in the ocean than there are fish. So either from the career perspective or from your own human interest to discover the world, you want to use the data also to forecast the future, that's possible. So in fact, I would say it's not just something we should do now, but it should have been something that should have been 20 to 30 years ago. Okay, so we're already late, right? But the point is we have the ability today with this confluence of these three things coming together that we can leverage upon this and make materials research go faster. The notion that you can conceptualize the world and, and predict it, uh, and the notion that you can use that power to do something good for the world. And make it brighter. That's an amazing thing we can do using these amazing AI tools to, to be the master of, our, of ourselves, of ourselves. There's a tremendous amount of uncertainty in the world and it's only going to grow. The reason we are so developed today is because we constantly upskill, right? Every second day you learn something new. You learn something new, you create new markets. You create new markets that you haven't even envisioned, right? Tomorrow's plumber is not going to be today's plumber. That's the answer, right? You still have plumbers because there will still be problems. It will never be perfect. The thing is you can fix it faster because you upskill it. You know, it's just a new tool in the toolbox. Having closed loop materials usage cycles, uh, deriving our energy from more sustainable sources, deriving our water from more sustainable sources, and using it more efficiently, these are all challenges that we're going to need to face as a society in areas that better tools, including an accelerated materials development platform, can help us uh, address. My mom used to teach chemistry in, in like a college. So I went to their chemistry lab and they all oh, the pitch, even the, the, the something they can change color, it ignites the kids' interest. You can just be a kid who's curious about how this thing runs, you know, and run on your computer. That's how you start. Simple. I am an idealistic person. I do take um, my role as a scientist um, uh, seriously. And I want to be able to use these tools for good. Right. That's what we're doing this for. Right. So science is just a means to make society a better place. And that's why we're going after this in this program.